Hello, welcome to Borderline Obsessed Travels, where I'm trying to get to every U.S. state, high point, tri point, county, and national park because a goblin told me I had to or he would take my firstborn. I know my hair is different, don't talk about it. In this video, I am traveling eastward across the U.S., gonna hit some national parks, some tri points, some high points, a little bit of everything. I hope you enjoy it. I just got to Petrified Forest National Park outside Holbrook, Arizona. It's full of fossilized 225 million year old trees. Some of the petroglyphs down here are up to 2,000 years old. So the petrified forest was formed 225 million years ago when a bunch of trees fell down and were buried with either silt or volcanic ash. Water seeped into this silt or ash and kept the trees from decaying, and eventually the original cells in these trees were replaced by silica, essentially turning the trees into rocks. And then over time the original material covering up these trees eroded away, but the trees remained. just got to the Four Corners Monument, which is not a tri point, but it's one better. It's a quadra point. There was an $8 per person entrance fee, and this monument is operated and maintained by Navajo Nation Parks and Rec. And this is going to be the point where Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico meet. It's the only state quadra point in the U.S. Navajo Nation and Ute Mountain Ute Tribe Reservations also meet at this point. The Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico flags are all here. And then the Navajo Nation flag is next to the Utah, New Mexico, and Arizona state flags because it's on those three sides. And the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe flag is with Colorado because it's on that side. I just got to Mesa Verde National Park outside Cortez, Colorado. This is not far from Four Corners. This was established as a national park in 1906. There are a bunch of ancestral Puebloan archaeological sites here and over 600 cliff dwellings. In order to get like a nice tour of some of these cliff dwellings, I would have had to purchase tickets uh, many days ago, which I did not do. So I'm gonna try to see some cliff dwellings anyway, but not as in depth as I would have if I planned better. This is Park Point, the highest point in the park, used as a fire lookout. The one cliff dwelling you can take a self-guided tour of happens to be closed right now, so that's as close as I'm getting. People have been living in the Mesa Verde region for thousands of years, and around the year 1000 BC, these people stopped being as nomadic as they were before and started building permanent pit house structures, which were structures that were built into the ground. By 750 AD, these people started gathering together in densely populated villages and building their houses above ground. By 1200 AD, they were building their communities in and around cliffs, creating the structures that the park is so famous for today. By 1300 AD, most of the people living here had left because of severe droughts.
I'm at Great Sand Dunes National Park in South Central Colorado. These are the tallest sand dunes in North America and they're about 440,000 years old. They're between the San Juan Mountains and the Sangre de Cristo Mountains and there are prevailing winds blowing eroded sand from the mountains in one direction and then there are storm winds blowing them in the other direction and they've just kind of piled up in between these two mountain ranges. The tallest sand dune in the park is Star Dune and it is 755 feet tall. This is another national park where sledding is a popular activity and I have once again not brought a sled with me. <laughs> I cannot overstate how windy it is. I felt very much like I was gonna get a bunch of sand in my eyes, so I'm gonna do a nature trail instead, I'm sorry. This is not a high point or a tri point, but right now I am at the geographic center of the lower 48 United States, which means that if the lower 48 was a big two-dimensional object, you'd be able to balance that object on your finger at this point outside Lebanon, Kansas. If you follow my Instagram account, post offices of wherever, uh, this is the post office that got me started with this obsession. I'm not gonna explain why, but just know that that's true. <laughs> this is the Iowa, Minnesota, South Dakota tri-point where Lyon County, Iowa, Rock County, Minnesota, and Minnehaha County, South Dakota meet. It's just on the side of the road. The plaque says that this marker has had to be relocated a few times. One time it was vandalized, one time it was hit by a car. I think the actual tri-point is more like somewhere here in the middle of the road. Apparently there's a, a pin in the road somewhere for the actual try point, but I can't find it close enough. <laughs> I'm at Hawkeye Point, the highest point in Iowa, and the 42nd highest state high point in the U.S. at 1,670 feet in elevation. There's a bunch of signs pointing to the other state high points. I think this is very cute. I'm not kidding when I say Hawkeye Point might be my new favorite high point because it's just so intentionally laid out. There's lots of nice touches like the multiple photo ops and the educational displays talking about the ecosystem and the local farming history. There are picnic tables and there's even a campground across the street. I think it's designed with high pointers in mind and I really appreciated that. This is the Hawkeye Point campground. It's right across the street, it's $20 a night. It's beautiful. So Tim's Hill is located in Tim's Hill County Park, and I'm at a parking area right now. It says it is 300 yards to the high point from here.
This is Tim's Hill, the highest point in Wisconsin and the 39th highest state high point in the U.S. at 1,951 feet in elevation. You get a great view of the area from the top of this observation tower. There's the trail of the parking lot. Pretty high up. I'm about to try to go to Michigan's high point, Mount Arvon, outside Lance, Michigan. It's around 25 miles from downtown Lance. I heard it used to be a pretty rough drive, but I've also heard that in the last few years, the road has been improved significantly. So hopefully I'll be able to drive all the way there. Um, we'll see. My GPS is already wrong, but there are these signs. So that's what I'm gonna be following. This is the trailhead to walk. If you wanna walk around two miles to get to Mount Arvon, you can do that and park here or you can continue to follow the signs driving. So I'm a half mile away right now. The road um, got a little muddy up there. So I pulled off onto like a gravel side of the road and I'm gonna walk the rest of the way. This has pretty much been the condition of the road for the last 10 miles, except there was a muddy patch back where I parked, but I might've actually been able to drive through it, but I didn't wanna risk it. Here's the parking area if you're able to make it up this far. High points that way. Viewpoints that way. So this is Mount Arvon, the highest point in Michigan and the 38th highest state high point in the U.S. at 1,979 feet in elevation. It might be a good idea to track your route in using GPS and then following your footsteps out because the route out is not marked very well and there are a lot of smaller logging roads. It wouldn't be difficult to get turned around back here. Thank you so much for watching. I put out videos every whenever I feel like it, so be sure to subscribe if you want or don't if you don't, and I will see you soon or whenever I feel like it. Bye.